Alright team, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go ahead and run Mistral's new large language model, the Mistral 7B, on our Apple Silicon M2 Max chip. You might have an M1 or you might have, you know, the Pro or even the Ultra versions of these chips. All of them will work just fine, so don't worry about that. I will say that I have not tried this on any Intel Macs, so your experience may vary there. But for anybody that's on Apple Silicon, we can go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we want to do is we are here, the Mac terminal that comes out of the box. I haven't changed anything really. We're going to do Xcode select dash dash install. If anybody has already installed Xcode or has run this command before, you don't need to do that. I've already done it, so I'm not going to hit enter, but go ahead and run that if you haven't before. The next thing you'll want to do is we're going to do brew install package config cmake so this is going to install two homebrew packages one of them is package config and the other one is cmake which is required for actually building a llama cpp which we're going to use to run our model so i've already ran this so i don't need to do it and for anybody that doesn't know what brew install is just go ahead and type in on in google homebrew install mac os and you'll be able to install that it's just a package manager very easy Next, we're going to want to make sure that we have Poetry installed. Poetry is a virtual environment and uh, dependency manager for Python, which I love and I use for all of my Python projects. If anybody has not done that before, you can literally just Google it. Poetry install and you'll see their documentation is very simple to follow. Go ahead and get that installed and then come on back. Next, we are going to go and create a new directory for this project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and CD into my documents, make dear, and I'm gonna do Mistral test is what I'm gonna call it. Then I'm gonna CD into it and open up VS code inside of it. Here we are inside. I'm just gonna create a empty main.py file. We're not gonna do anything with that just yet. Towards the end, I will show how to use Python to instrument Mistral 7B using Llama CPP, which is pretty amazing because then you can basically build this into any other Python application that you might wanna build. And I'll have videos coming out on how to do some projects like that. But anyways, for now, we're just gonna go ahead and open up terminal from inside VS Code. We're gonna go ahead and initialize poetry. So we'll do poetry init. It'll ask us a couple of questions. We just keep uh, hitting enter. The one for author, right now I'm just gonna do N. I don't need to put anything in there. Compatible Python versions, yep, just keep that. And then for these two questions about dependencies, I just answer no on both of them. And then yes on uh, confirming generation. So we'll see that pyproject.toml has now showed up inside of our directory. That means that we've correctly initialized poetry inside of our project. The next thing that we want to do is we're actually gonna go and download the Llama CPP source code and we're gonna compile it using the CMake that we just installed using Homebrew. We can literally just Google this you don't have to trust me on the command. We can actually go to the actual repository and download it from there. So we're gonna do llama cpp github and you can see that it's there. Click it, you can scroll down a bit and you'll see that some of the instructions say, uh, go ahead and clone the code. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna copy that first command, the git clone. We are going to run it here. It'll go ahead and download the Llama CPP folder. As you can see, it just showed up here. If you expand it, you'll see it has a bunch of files. We're not too worried about that. What we're gonna do is just, we're gonna CD into it, and then we're gonna run the command make. And this will take a little while, maybe like 30 seconds to a minute, maybe a little bit longer, but it'll go ahead and actually compile Llama CPP from source, and then we'll be able to use it as a command to actually run the uh, Mistral 7B LLM. So I'll just wait here a minute and it's done. Now we have Llama CPP properly compiled. We are off to the races. So the next thing that we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and install some Python dependencies here. So we are going to do poetry add torch. All right, we got it. Torch is now installed. Then we're gonna do poetry add torch vision. We'll go ahead and install that. 
And I think I have these installed on my system, which is why it's not like downloading anything, but it should be very simple for all of you to do it. These are very common packages. There shouldn't be any issues. And then the last one that we're gonna do is add. So poetry add, hugging face dash hub. Again, I've already installed this before, so I'm pretty sure it's just cached on my system, which is why it's not actually downloading anything, but it's another very common one. So it should download pretty easy for you. Then the last thing that we are going to do is we are going to actually download the model. So if you open up the llama.cpp folder, you can see that it already has a models folder. So we're just gonna make use of that. So we're already inside of llama.cpp, so we're just gonna do CD models. And now we are inside the models directory and you can see there's already one file in there. We're not gonna use that one, we're gonna download our own. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to this page, which you can Google search for if you want, just type in, you know, the blow Mistral 7B and you should be able to find this page. And so this is the model that we are going to actually download. It's worth it mentioning here that this is not the pure model from Mistral. So this is somebody who's very well known in the community. What he does is he quantizes the models, which means that he basically, if you think about it, it's kind of like lowering their resolution to make them easier to run on hardware. Yes, you do lose a little bit of resolution, right? or accuracy in the model, the smaller that you make it, the more that you quantize it. But what this does is it gives us options. So if we have a system that has less RAM, we can use a smaller model, which is more heavily quantized. Or if we have a lot of RAM, we can use a bigger model. And you can see here on the page that he actually has some where he labels them as recommended or not recommended. If you are on a machine that has less than eight gigs of RAM, you probably want to run one of the smaller ones like the Q4KM, which he labels as recommended and it has balanced quality. And the max RAM that it'll take is about 6.87. I'm actually gonna run the second biggest one, which is not one that he actually labels as recommended specifically, but I've run it before, it works fine. And I like to just kind of keep as much resolution as I can without having to use a ton of RAM. My machine has 32 gigs, so I'm not too worried about the RAM requirement. So I'm just gonna run the Q6K model. But again, if you have less RAM, go ahead and run one of the other smaller ones. And so what we'll do is we can just scroll down on this page here and we'll see that he actually gives us the same advice. He says, you know, install Hugging Face Hub. This is the recommended way of installing this. So he has a command that you can actually use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that command. And actually, for those of you that are on machines that have less RAM, you can actually just use this direct command. You don't have to change it because it already has, it's already set up for the Q4KM model. I'm gonna change it because I wanna run the slightly bigger model. So I'm actually gonna go here and change the name and I need to look up exactly what it's called. It's the yeah, Q6K. So Q6 underscore K dot GGUF. And we can see that we're just downloading it to the current directory, which is the models directory that we're in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click enter. It'll start downloading it. All right, so the download is done. And actually I did actually have to go ahead and re-download it for myself, but that's completely okay. Now that we have the model actually here and we have llama.cpp compiled and everything, we are ready to actually do a test run. We can actually use llama cpp and we have the model downloaded. So we can go ahead and run it now. I'm gonna go ahead and change out of the models directory just so we're back in the llama.cpp directory. We have easy access to the command. And here I'm gonna go ahead and run this command, which is dot slash main and main is the command that we actually compiled so we're calling it we're going to say dash m which is how we pass the model and we are going to type in dot slash models slash mistral and you can actually do tab to auto complete and once you have the file selected we are going to do dash t8 dash n128 dash p and this is where we're going to actually pass in the prompt so we'll just do single quote we're going to type in q and we'll just do a test like who was the first man on the moon and then we'll do a space and end the quote and then we can go ahead and hit enter and we'll see that the model will load into memory and hopefully have a fast ssd so it can load pretty quickly and then you'll see that we'll actually get back our answer one token at a time, which is about roughly about one word at a time. And you'll see if you scroll up a little bit that it's here, right? So it says 
we all know that in July of 1969, Neil Armstrong stepped off the ladder, blah, 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 and it's there. We have successfully asked it a question and it has come back and answered us. If that's all you wanted to do, you can end it here. What I'm gonna do next is I'm actually going to make it so that we can call the model from Python. We can actually instrument it. So the first thing is that we need to add a new dependency that's actually going to allow us to have Python talk to Llama CPP. We can actually go ahead and go Google for it. So we'll do GitHub and we'll do Llama CPP Python and you'll see it's the first link. We'll scroll down a bit and where we're gonna go actually is to the Mac OS installation. So you'll see there's a, a little section. It's kind of weird how they lay it out, but it says Mac OS remarks right here. And then there's like a single little tiny link. We're gonna go ahead and click that. Now we've already done most of these things. So we're gonna just skip all the way down here to this command, this pip install command. Just copy the part that's inside of the uh, single quotes because we're not using pip, we're gonna use poetry. So back in our terminal and look at the fact that I'm inside of Mistral test. So if you're not in Mistral test, go ahead and CD into it. And so we're gonna do poetry add and then go ahead and do uh, control V. It'll go ahead and install it, install that dependency. And now I'm gonna go back a page inside of the documentation and we can see where it says high level API. And we're basically just gonna copy what they have here. We're just gonna do it line by line though. Copy the import statement, bring it over. And by the way, for any of you that might have an issue with like Python not recognizing the packages that you've installed, just make sure that you have the correct interpreter. So if you click down here where it says 3.11 or whatever, you'll see that it'll show you a couple of different interpreters. Make sure that you're on the one that says poetry. And that way Python will pick up the correct virtual environment dependencies and all that. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and do the next line. And don't worry about the inaccuracy here just yet in terms of the model, because we're going to change it to the model that we downloaded. We're going to go ahead and download the next line that says output, bring that over. And then the last one is just uh, we're printing that output. So great. We have our Python code and I think it'll actually work right now if you run it because Llama CPP, it comes out of the box with this model. But anyways, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna say Llama CPP because we're not inside of the Llama CPP. We need to make sure that we specify that as the model path from inside of Mistral test. So we're saying go into Llama CPP, then into models, and then you'll find the model that we are looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and go in there actually and make sure that I copy over. And actually we can probably do like copy relative path. Let's see if that works. Perfect. So the last thing I'll just do is just do a, a dot slash. It's just nice to do that. So we have our model here been specified. We have our call to the LLM, which we can pretty much just leave as is. We don't need to change it. And I think we're ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the terminal. We're gonna do Python three main.py and hit enter. And we'll see similar output from what we saw last time when we ran it just directly from the command line. You'll see that the output is a bit different though. And that is because we're running it through Python and specifically this Python library that allows us to talk to Llama CPP and the way that it returns the results from Llama CPP is with JSON. So you'll see here, if you look through the JSON a bit under the text section, you'll see that we have our question, which was name the planets in the solar system. And you'll see that the model came back and filled in. So that's it. We have successfully ran this. If we want, we could get a little bit more specific. If you wanna like specifically take out, you know, the text, we can go ahead and do that. So we could go open brackets and do choices and we are grabbing the first index that's inside of the list of choices and then we are pulling out text so if you run that it'll kind of clean up the output for you a little bit and just give you back what's inside of uh, the text which is this here boom and it got back to us the output is kind of cut off because we only gave it 32 tokens so if we actually want to see all of the planets, we could go ahead and specify this up to 64 tokens and it'll go ahead and do that so we can rerun it and we'll see, give it a little bit and it tells us all of the planets and it's kind of actually incorrectly saying Pluto. So um, Mistral, you guys are incorrect. Your data set is incorrect. Pluto is no longer a planet, so get that right. But anyways, we can see that it worked. We are now able to instrument Mistral's 7B LLM from Python using Llama CPP. That is it for today. Let me know if you guys want to see more examples of things that we can do. Let me know what kind of things you guys are building with it because this is pretty exciting, pretty amazing. Until next time, y'all take care. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.